Now, coming up on 5.30 on WKYT This Morning, we're tracking the investigation into a deadly crash in Garrett County. A man and a woman have been killed and two others have been injured there. And people in Lexington trying to figure out how to crack down on violence across the city. We'll tell you what people think should happen coming up next. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. It's your Tuesday, June 23rd, and we are glad you're up and at it with us this morning. It certainly feels like a summer day out there this morning. In fact, almost a tropical feel. I'm Bill Bryant. Rebecca's off today. Let's check in with meteorologist Micah Harris, tracking the possibility of some storms later on. Yeah, if you walk outside, you can feel it. I mean, if something were to pop outside, you know it would have just enough energy to keep going because it's just that sticky feel. A lot of times when you're expecting storms, you can walk outside and tell yeah, I have a good chance at it, or I don't know. It's kind of a little bit dry outside. It's just one of those mornings you know when you step out the door, something's on the way. And there's the front to the north of us. Does not look impressive, but I do want to show you these little blips, kind of that line right through there. You see that right through there? That's going to be heading our direction. And once you get the interaction with that and also the heating of the day, that'll start to fire some things away. Fog not really an issue this morning. Temperatures there in the 70s. We head toward the afternoon, 88 degrees, strong storms in the forecast. There's no doubt about that. You have about a 60% chance of those spotty, strong thunderstorms. But severe weather, that's a possibility too. And I'll go over the main players, the main threats coming up in just a few short minutes. Okay, we'll see you then. WKYT now with breaking news that we're tracking in Lexington this morning. We're told that a woman has been shot in the arm. Here's a live look right now at the scene. It's along Bishop Drive. And this is what's going on there right now as a lot of questions are being asked. Police officers have surrounded a home there with crime scene tape. We're told the woman showed up at Good Samaritan Hospital going to the emergency room here in Lexington with the gunshot wound to the arm. But police also tell us that she is not not cooperating with their investigation. Right now, officers are searching through the yard and the home for any evidence, and we do have news crews working, gathering more info, and we'll bring that to you as it comes into our newsroom. New this morning, we are tracking the investigation into a deadly crash in Garrett County. The wreck happened just after 9 last night on Kentucky 52 outside of Lancaster, and it killed two people. WKYT's Hillary Thornton is live from UK Hospital, where two other victims have been taken. Hillary, uh, what are the, we have the names now of the uh, victims that were killed, right? Good morning, Bill. That's right. We have learned that a man and a woman were killed in that crash, and the coroner has identified them as 32-year-old Stephanie Lunsford and 33-year-old James Anthony Gaines. Now, investigators say the driver lost control of the vehicle for some reason, causing the van carrying four people to go off of the roadway and up a large embankment about 20 to 30 feet. Officials say that then caused the van to go airborne and flip several times. Investigators say all four people were ejected and they do not believe any were wearing their seatbelts. The coroner says Gaines and Lunsford died at the scene. The two other people were brought here to UK Hospital. The Garrett County Sheriff describes their injuries as non life threatening, and investigators are continuing to try and figure out what exactly caused that driver to lose control. Live in Lexington, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. Hillary, thank you very much. New this morning, a person has been arrested in the shooting death of a Kentucky State University student in Georgia. 19 year old Wally Clanton was killed in the shooting two weeks ago. Four other people were also shot. 18 year old Terrence Montgomery Jr. of Atlanta has been arrested and charged with murder and assault. Police say they are still investigating the circumstances of the shooting. Two days after a Lexington shooting left five people injured, police say they still have have not caught the person responsible. It happened Sunday night at Douglas Park off Georgetown Street during the Dirt Bowl basketball tournament. That tournament has now been moved elsewhere. Last night, folks held a town hall meeting to talk about how to stop violence in the city. One woman at the meeting says the community needs to work with all of its members. So let's have real conversations about the true causes of this beyond just blaming the individual because a community is no better than any individual who's at its lowest in the community. So how do we bring individuals who are at their lowest really into the community so that we can truly have a community? 
Police think there was only one shooter on Sunday night, but they do not have a good description of that shooter, so they're asking for the public's help and with information that might come in. In a WKYT exclusive, the mother of a Marine who was shot to death in Lexington a year ago talked to us about him. It was last June that someone killed Jonathan Price outside Austin City Saloon. He was with his wife celebrating her birthday at the time. Police have not made any arrests for the murder. Jonathan's mother, Debbie Price, said she was very close to her son, and she says her home is filled with memories of him from pictures to Jonathan's fatigues to his dog tags. I'll be honest, there's not been a day that I haven't cried at some point. It's like there's a hole in my heart, and I don't think it can ever be repaired, but I'm grateful that I have good memories to help fill in that hole. Debbie Price also says Lexington police talk to her or to Jonathan's wife at least once a month to give them updates on the case. The family is planning to go canoeing in Jonathan's memory this weekend. 535 now on WKYT this morning and happening today Lexington parents will have a chance to meet a candidate for Fayette County School Superintendent. Two superintendent candidates Emmanuel Kalk and Terry Breeden will be visiting Lexington this week to interview for the job and meet with community members. WKYT's Mark Barber is live from the school district office where school leaders will be hosting a public reception later today. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Bill. The school board says that they received an overwhelming amount of interest from people who want to meet the two finalists, so they've moved their public reception to Dunbar High School. Now, the school board tells us that they have narrowed down their search for the next Fayette County superintendent to the two finalists because they both have a strong record of gap closing success urban experience and transformation leadership. The public will get to meet the first finalist, Emmanuel Koch, today. He's the superintendent of Portland Public Schools in Maine. His meet and greet will be from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. The second candidate, Terry Breeden, will be in Lexington on Thursday. She is the assistant superintendent of Loudoun County Public Schools in Virginia. People will also have a chance to meet her at a reception after she tours the schools here. Each candidate will be in Lexington for two days, and on that second day, they will be interviewed by focus groups, which will include students, employees, and people in the community. Then, at 6 p.m. on Wednesday and Friday, the school board is inviting the public to participate in forums at the district office where the candidates will be asked another round of questions. Now, the school board says throughout the week, they will be listening to feedback from the community, and that will, in part, help them select the next superintendent. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. All right, Mark, thank you. A very important decision, certainly. Well, police have released some new details about their investigation into the murder of an elderly Rock Castle County woman. It came during a hearing for the two suspects in the case, Tabitha Howard and Kimberly Slusher. Police say earlier this month, the two women cut the phone lines to 86 year old Mary Hinton's home, went inside, and then used a flat screen television and a gun. To beat her. They say before the women left, they even used a pillow to smother her. Police say the women were motivated by wanting to buy drugs. This is a murder about dope and greed and money, you know, to go buy the dope with. Police say after the murder, the two women took money out of the victim's bank account and bought meth. They also say each woman blames the other for the murder. The judge has sent the case on to the local grand jury. Well, the governor of South Carolina says if the state legislature does not take action to remove the Confederate flag from the state house grounds this summer, she will force the issue. The call to remove the flag comes in the aftermath of the Charleston Church massacre. Mark Albert has more on that. It's time to move the flag from the Capitol grounds. South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley is calling for state lawmakers to move quickly on legislation that would remove the Confederate flag from state property. Republican State Representative Doug Brannon said he plans to introduce a bill that would do just that. I've been in the House five years. I should have filed that bill five years ago. Um, but the time is now. While Brannon acknowledged the move could cost him reelection, many with presidential aspirations rush to embrace Governor Haley's call. Democrats Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders join Republicans Scott Walker, Jeb Bush, and Rick Perry in tweeting their support. Senator Lindsey Graham, who had expressed a different opinion just days before, publicly reversed course. 
put it in a museum, move forward. Some are vowing to fight the move. If we're going to remove all these symbols of the Civil War, are we going to take down the memorial to the Little Rock Nine because it reminds us of segregation? The flag was moved from the top of the State House dome 15 years ago to its current position as part of a Confederate memorial out front. It can only be lowered with a vote by the state legislature. Mark Albert, CBS News, Washington. In Mississippi, the House Speaker there is now calling for the Confederate emblem to be removed from that state's flag. And in Tennessee, some state lawmakers are calling for the removal of a Confederate general bust and the bust of an early KKK leader from an area near the Senate chamber in Nashville. It has been two years since a Madison County teenager disappeared, and her family is making sure she is not forgotten. Brooklyn Farthing was just 18 years old when she went missing from Berea in June of 2013. Her family has now raised $14,000 for a reward in the case. And they've also launched a website asking people for tips. Both police and Brooklyn's family are still hopeful that they will find out what happened. A, a case doesn't, doesn't go cold until information quits coming in. Uh, fortunately, uh, there's still uh, things in the community where people are letting us know and, and giving us information. It's been pretty rough at some times, but... We know that if we don't keep her name out there, that it'll just get pushed down under the rug. So we try to keep just pushing it just as hard as we can do because that's our job now. Now we have a link to the family's website at WKYT.com. Good news for one Cincinnati Bengals player's daughter. Devin Steele's daughter, Leah, is home from the hospital after her latest round of cancer treatments. Leah has been battling pediatric nerve cell cancer for about a year now. And Devin Steele tweeted yesterday that she was still finishing up her last night in the hospital and is going home. Late last night, he tweeted this picture of her shortly after she got home. Leah has been in remission since March and pulled through a complication with her treatment last month. We we'll continue to wish her well. Let's check live drive traffic this morning. See what's going on, what you're facing as you head out the door and off to work here on this Tuesday morning. We'll take a look uh, right now at the roads and the Waze map. See what's going on. Nothing uh, really much to report at the moment. That's good. Nothing really slowing down the morning commute. The only thing we're seeing those pre existing construction projects that are ongoing near downtown, around the Center Point location, and around the UK campus as well, uh, where they continue to work on Alumni Drive between. Uh, Tate's Creek Road over to Nicholsville Road. Other than that, you should be good to go. And there's a lot more news coming up on WKYT this morning. We're very closely watching weather today. Yeah, looking outside, it looks pretty good, right? But you got a good look north then. It doesn't look overly impressive now. But there is a boundary heading our way. And once it interacts with those uh, temperatures this afternoon, yeah, you're going to look at those storms. I'll have your hour by hour forecast for your day coming up. 